Audiobook Academy. Book Summary. The Last of the Mohicans. By James Fenimore Cooper. James Fenimore Cooper's second novel, The Last of the Mohicans, was published in 1840. The Leatherstocking Tales Pentalogy included a series of novels. Both The Pioneers, 1823, and The Prairie, 1827, came before it. The next book in the series, The Pathfinder, was released in 1840, 14 years after the first. Set during the Seven Years' War, or the French and Indian War. Despite the fact that both the French and British made use of Native Americans as scouts and friends, it was the British who held an advantage due to the presence of British colonists. In addition, the French were frequently outmatched by their Native American scouts. The French and the Delaware tribe attack Fort William Henry in this book. Fort William Henry Commander Colonel Monroe's two children, Cora and Alice. Magua, a trustworthy scout sent by Fort Edwards Commander, General Webb, and Major Duncan Hayward are accompanying the females. David Gamet, a young man who is striving to spread the Christian faith via singing, greets them on their journey. Until they meet the famous frontiersman Hawkeye and his Mohican allies Chingachgook and Sunrunkus, Hayward has no idea that they are being led into danger by Magua. It details their encounters with wild Native Americans as they walk through the forest. The conflict between good and evil is the subject of this novel. With a good end result, but at a high price. There are colonial battles in North America when the story The Last of Mohicans begins. Franco-Indian War in its third year the terrain is as deadly as the conflict because of the hostile Native Americans that live there. It takes months for European armies to fight their way over raging rivers and steep mountain routes. In no time at all, the soldiers begin to behave like the natives with whom they are engaged in combat and improve their ability to navigate the terrain. Uphold the cold and selfish policy of Europe's distant kings is their stated mission statement. Montgom, the French general, enlists the help of many Native American tribes in an attempt to capture Fort William Henry from the British. General Webb is informed by Indian scout Magua that he knows who he is loyal to after intercepting a telegram from the French about an impending attack. Colonel Monroe, who is in charge of the fort, has requested that Webb bring in reinforcements to assist him. Webb dispatches Major Haywood to bring Alice and Cora Monroe to their father's side. Alice is fascinated and repulsed at the same time by an Indian runner who rushes past them as they leave. That runner she was admiring, Magua, is the one she's been rooting for. He offers to accompany the young women in Haywood on their trip. He knows a secret route that only the locals know about. In the aftermath of their departure from Fort Edward, they run upon a weird man declaring himself to be an exorcist. He expresses his gratitude to God by singing psalms from the Old Testament. Because he is so delicate and gentle, he looks out of place in the woods. It is his intention to join their gang, he claims. Hayward is irritated by his arrogant demeanor, but he is intrigued when he learns that he is a college instructor. A mathematician slash scientist by training, he is surprised when Gamut tells him that his only knowledge is from the Bible and its accompanying music. In order to avoid alerting the natives, Magua whispers in Hayward's ear and tells him to keep quiet. In his self-assured sweep of the woodland, Major Hayward misses a wide-eyed Indian peering over the trees at them from a distance. There is a conversation taking place in another part of the forest involving Hawkeye, a white hunter, and his Mohican comrade Shingachgook, a Mohican supporter. Both men are hunters, although their attire varies greatly. A hunting blouse, a skin cap, and buckskin leggings complete Hawkeye's hunting attire. Besides the knife and pouch, he's got a horn in his possession as well. While the Chingachgook wears a loincloth and is coated with paint, there are also differences in the weapons they use. Both Hawkeye and Chingachgook are armed with long rifles and tomahawks. His tribe has been wiped off, and Chingachgook weeps. They are the only Mohicans still alive. Sun was following the Maquas, the Iroquois adversaries of the Mohicans, who were being pursued by his younger brother. They hear the neighing of a herd of horses on the horizon. Hayward and his group are being transported on horses. To put it another way, they claim that Magua has taken them off course. Hawkeye thinks that's odd, because an Indian wouldn't get lost in the woods like that. While initially skeptical, he grows more confident after learning that Magua is from the Huron tribe. Only the Mohicans in Delawares, according to him, are trustworthy among the Indians. It is decided by Hawkeye and Hayward that Magua will be arrested on accusations of treason. While Hayward is distracted, the Mohicans try to sneak up on Magua but he runs. Shots are fired by Hawkeye. Despite Magua's escape, Hawkeye discovers blood on a leaf, proving that he hit the criminal. While Hayward wants to pursue him, 
Hawkeye is concerned that the commotion may alert the enemy. A place to sleep is a priority for the remainder of the group. The Mohicans have a secret refuge, according to Uncas. When Hayward swears he won't reveal the location of the secret hideout to the English, they travel to see him. When Gamut's horse makes too much noise, the Mohicans kill it and bury its body in the river as a warning to the other tribes. The remaining horses are hidden and the women are taken in a canoe. It appears to Hawkeye that the horses were concerned by the presence of wolves nearby, as evidenced by their nervousness. Wolves eat deer that have been slaughtered by Indians, which is a clue that the Indians are around. The two Mohicans and Hawkeye vanish into thin air as Gamut sings a song to his dead steed. All of the other members of the party can now see where the cave's entrance is hidden behind the waterfall's wall. Unka expresses interest in Alice while they eat venison, and Gamut continues to lament the loss of his horse. A hymn sung by Hawkeye brings back memories of his childhood. Even though Unka snuck outdoors to investigate a mysterious noise, she came back empty-handed. For the time being, Hayward, Cora, and Alice have retired to the inner cave for their own safety and that of the others. When Hawkeye hears the sound again, he goes to investigate. He, too, is baffled. Cora regrets their decision to follow their father's lead. Hawkeye believes the sound is a warning, so he and the others leave the cave together. When he hears the sound again, he concludes it is the terrified cries of the horses. The wolves who are disturbing the horses are chased away, and the gang waits in the shadows until the sun rises. Gamut was wounded in the onslaught of the Iroquois at morning. Hayward protects the women and Gamut in the outer cave as Chingachgook exchanges fire. Until aid arrives, Hawkeye warns them they have no choice but to stay put and fight. Hayward and Hawkeye saw four Indians swimming dangerously near to the cave the next morning after fighting all day. They enlist the assistance of Uncas and resume combat. A sense of defeat settles in when they discover that their ammunition has been taken. After that, Cora devises a strategy. She proposes that the men take a boat down the river to safety. She believes that the Iroquois will not kill the ladies, and that the men will eventually rescue them. Despite the soldiers swimming away, Hayward refuses to give up hope. It is soon discovered by the Iroquois that Cora, Alice, Gamut and Hayward are hiding from them behind a blanket. It is only after Hayward tries to shoot Magua that the group is captured. Instead of killing Hayward, the Hurons want to gain information from him. When they learn that Hawkeye and the Mohicans have left, they are so enraged that they want to kill Alice. Instead, the leader chooses to relocate the entire band to the river's south bank. The Indians stop Cora from leaving a trail. To keep an eye on the whites, Magua brings them to the top of a steep hill. In order to save the women, Hayward urges Magua to do it on behalf of their father. Magua informs Cora that he intends to punish her father in a private conversation. In the beginning, Magua was the leader of his tribe, but he later fell addicted to alcohol. According to him, Captain Monroe once whipped him because he showed up to camp inebriated. He plans to marry Cora in order to avenge himself on the captain, and if she accepts, he will free Alice. The Hurons tie her to the stakes because she refuses. Hayward gets enraged when Magua shaves off a strand of Alice's hair, which prompts him to flee and attack an Indian. The Indian Hayward was battling is killed by a shot as the Hurons are ready to kill him. They've been saved by Hawkeye and the Mohicans. Since the Hurons had removed their rifles, they were able to take the battle swiftly, but Magua is able to flee. Uncas frees the women from their shackles while Hawkeye engages Gamut in a religious argument while rescuing Chingachgook. Fort William Henry is the next stop for them. To hide their traces, the party walks across water after spending a night in a wrecked blockhouse. There is a pond Hawkeye claims to be full of French corpses that they pass by. They encounter a French guard as they near Fort William Henry. During the conversation, Hawkeye uses French, while Chingachgook lurks behind him and stabs him in the neck. Crossfire is more likely to occur when the English and French exchange more shots. It is finally over, and Colonel Monroe embraces his two daughters as they emerge from the cave. After five days of fighting, Hawkeye is taken prisoner by the French forces. The letter Hawkeye was delivering to General Webb is kept by Montcalm, who asks to meet with Monroe about it. Hayward is sent in his stead. While trying to keep his Indian allies in check, Montcalm begs them to surrender. He meets the general and his daughters when looking for the general to deliver Montcalm's message. It's revealed that the mothers of the two girls are diametrically opposed. Neither Alice's nor Cora's mother was from Scotland, but both of their fathers were from the United Kingdom. Fortifications are surrendered after Monroe returns with Hayward to the French camp and receives an official letter from Webb. Their weaponry, baggage, and colors are safe, 
Montcalm promises them. The Indians will not attack. Monroe says yes to the offer. An attack by Indians who are allied with the French greeted English soldiers as they attempted to leave their fort on Sunday morning. In the midst of the carnage, Magua grabs Alice by the arm and drags her away. Cora is on his tail, closely followed by Gamut. In order to deter the Indians from approaching the young women, he'd started singing his songs in their ear holes. Native Americans start plundering dead bodies. Three days later, Hawkeye, the Mohicans, Monroe, and Hayward are standing over the fort's charred remains. Hayward is eager to follow Unka's trail when he finally discovers a lead leading to Cora and Alice, but Hawkeye insists that they first come up with a game plan. Monroe is taken aback by the news of his daughter's disappearance. The gang sets out across the lake, heading north. The Huron people have spotted them and are pursuing them. However, their mastery of the paddles allows them to outrun their opponents. By heading east, they hope to mislead their pursuers as they approach the shore. They leave a noticeable trail behind them as they haul their boat out of the water. After that, they follow in their footsteps and make their way home. They paddled all the way to the western shore of the creek. They hide the canoe and take a nap in preparation for the next day's hunt. The next day, they continue on the trail. They'll soon arrive in Gamut, deep in the woods. As an Indian, he's decked out in all the appropriate garb. Only a small tuft of hair grows on his head, which he has painted. Cora was sent to the Delaware, while Alice was sent to the Huron camp by Magua. Gamut was freed because authorities believe he is insane. Chingachgook had Hayward dress up as a clown so that he can pass himself off as a juggler from Ticonderoga. Uncas and Hayward head to the Delaware camp to get Cora, while he and Gamut head to the Huron camp. As part of his ruse to appease the Hurons, Hayward assumes the role of a doctor. It's soon after this that a party of Hurons return with a prisoner in order to chase them. Hayward accidentally trips one of his pursuers, resulting in a victory for the prisoner. Then he realizes the inmate is none other than Uncas. During this time, Uncas' captor is approached by his father, who calls him a coward and murders him. Meanwhile, Magua has spotted Uncas, and convinces the Hurons he must be tortured and killed the next day. Afterwards, the chief brings Hayward to see an Indian woman who is ill. A bear tamed and mimicking the man's song is found singing to Gamut, who is singing to her. The chief wants Hayward to save the woman's life, and he wants him to do it. He flees after the bear growls and charges at him from behind. The bear is disguised as Hawkeye. Chingachgook and Monroe are safe, and Alice is hiding in the grotto they are in, he says Hayward. Hayward and Hawkeye restrain Magua. Hayward then carries the unconscious Alice away, wrapped in the dead Indian woman's clothing. In order to obtain therapeutic plants for the woman, he informs the chief that he must accompany her into the forest. If they see an evil ghost in the cave, he tells them to kill it. Hawkeye sends Hayward and Alice to the Delaware camp, while he returns to rescue Uncas, after they are safe in the forest. Hawkeye disguises himself as a bear and meets Gamut. Gamut and Hawkeye track down Uncas, who dons the bear suit while Hawkeye dons Gamut's and the two swap roles. They believe that the Indians will not assault Gamut because they are afraid of madmen. On their way to the cave, the Hurons come across Magua and discover that the Indian woman inside has been killed. In order to avenge the soldiers who duped them, they free him and let him lead a party to the Delaware camp. Magua arrives in the Delaware camp the following morning. La Long Carabine, a legendary Indian killer, is hiding out in their camp. He persuade them the Indians referred to Hawkeye by this moniker. 100-year-old Tominan's judgment is heard by more than a thousand Delawareans. Hawkeye, Cora, Alice, and Hayward are brought to bear by the warriors. Despite Hayward's best efforts, Hawkeye claims to be La Long Carabine. To determine which of the two men is telling the truth, they engage in a shooting contest. Hawkeye takes the victory. After Magua gets the audience riled up, the two guys are tied up. Cora pleads with Tominan to listen to Uncas's side of the story. He is open to hearing what the Mohican has to say, despite his skepticism. When Uncas accuses Magua of being a liar, he is convincing. Tominan is enraged and calls for Uncas to be tortured as a result of this. The tortoise tattoo on his chest is revealed when they remove his shirt. As a result of this, Tominan believes that Uncas is the reincarnation of Tominan's deceased grandfather Uncas. Hawkeye is freed as soon as Uncas is freed. Uncas then tries to persuade the Delawares that Magua is a liar as well. Magua, on the other hand, is adamant that he be permitted to keep one of his inmates as a ward. Magua flees with Cora after Uncas reluctantly agrees to let her go. Despite Hawkeye's promise to die in her place and give up his rifle in the deal, 
A timetable has been set for locating and apprehending Magna. Cora's rescue plot is being devised by the Gamut as they arrive. He reveals Magna's location to them. Once they meet Chingachgook and Monroe, they plan to take on the Huron warrior together and rescue Cora. Magua and two warriors retreat to the cave where he keeps Cora after a battle with the Hurons. Into the cavern they go with the help of Hawkeye, Uncas, Gamut, and Hayward. The cliff they are standing on becomes too much for Cora to bear, and she refuses to go any further. Magua is torn between killing her and marrying her. After Uncas lands near her, his friend stabs her in the heart. Magua is enraged and charges towards Uncas, but Uncas stabs Magua first. In spite of his wounds, Uncas kills the Huron who killed Cora. Uncas is then killed by Magua. Hawkeye shoots Magua as he leaps across the cliff. As a result, he meets his end at the ravine's bottom. Grieving begins the next day. Chingachgook holds Monroe's son's body, while Monroe clutches his daughter's. Cora is laid to rest in a religious ceremony before she is laid to rest in a grave. Then the whites leave except for Hawkeye who stays behind to help with Uncas' burial. There are no more Mohicans, according to Tominand. Hawkeye, larger than life. A hero of the American West. Rough and tumble, but still a gentleman in his own right. He accompanied the Mohicans, Chingachgook, and Uncas on their travels and throughout their battles. He fought alongside them. He is widely regarded as one of the best marksmen in the tribes. They dread him, but they also admire his courage. Because of his well-known firearm, which he has dubbed Kildare, he is known as La Long Carabin or the Long Rifle. Even though his given name is Natty Bumpo, he goes by the moniker Hawkeye. To him, the Native Americans and the trees are a more natural fit than the whites and the modern world. In order to provide a bridge between whites and Native Americans, the author makes a point of emphasizing Hawkeye's race throughout the novel. Magna, that's the obvious bad guy. It is difficult to kill and has no redeeming features. He belongs to the Huron tribe and goes by the French name Le Renard Subtil, which translates to subtle fox in the white language spoken by the tribes. He used to be the tribe's chief, but his alcoholism caused him to lose that position. Because of his alcoholism, he blames the white males, and Colonel Monroe in particular. Throughout the narrative, he is driven by a desire for vengeance against the whites, in particular Colonel Monroe. One of the man's daughters will be his bride-to-be so he can use her as a means of enslaving her father. Although the author portrays him as a loyal supporter of British General Webb, it is rapidly apparent that his thirst for vengeance is greater. Hawkeye, the novel's protagonist, reveals his evil nature. For the remainder of the book, he keeps appearing just in time to raise the stakes. After being shot and murdered by Hawkeye, he succumbs to his injuries and dies. Major Duncan Hayward, the romantic lead in the story. An English army major, he's a young colonist from the South who's made a name for himself. He's a brave and honorable man. Hawkeye's inability to control and understand the forest and its inhabitants is a recurring theme throughout the novel, and it causes him troubles at times. Uncas, he was the son of Chingachgook and the youngest and last known member of the Mohican tribe. One can't help but admire him as an example of the noble red man. Cooper uses Cora Monroe, the daughter of Colonel Monroe, to make him fall in love with him. Having to comply with the rules of the Native Americans he lives with, he must allow the guy to take Cora and utilizes his abilities to find Magua down. While trying to save her for the final time, he discovers that she has been slain and kills the Huron brave who did it. Magua kills him, and then Hawkeye kills Magua. Cora and he are going to spend their final days together on the beautiful hunting grounds, according to Native American folk songs about him. He will take care of his aged father because Hawkeye is his blood brother. The Life of James Fenimore Cooper Burlington, New Jersey, was the birthplace of James Fenimore Cooper, who was born in September 1789. One of America's greatest writers on the American frontier, he wrote many volumes. Authors such as Louis Lamour and Zane Grey have used his own style of American writing. A frequent occurrence at the time, Cooper was the 11th child to die in infancy, out of a total of 12 children. The family relocated to Cooperstown, New York, when he was one year old. His father had started the community. It was built on property he had purchased to be developed. The Iroquois of the Six Nations had owned the town in central New York. As a result of their support for Great Britain during the Revolutionary War, the Iroquois had to give up their land. Yale University accepted Cooper as a freshman when he was just 13 years old. A deadly prank that entailed blowing up a student's door and putting a donkey in a recitation room led to his expulsion from college in his third year. Cooper enlisted in a merchant ship's crew when he was 17 years old. 
He was a midshipman in the United States Navy by the time he was 22 years old. Cooper was 20 years old when he received his father's inheritance. Susan Augusta Delancey became his wife the next year. Only five of their seven children made it to adulthood. Susan Fenimore Cooper, her father's only child, followed in his footsteps as a writer. Nature and women's suffrage were two of her interests. When his wife bet him that he'd be able to produce a greater book than the one she was reading in 1820, he agreed. Because of this, he was inspired to write Precaution by Jane Austen. When it was released under a pseudonym, it was a big hit in both the United States and the UK. A story John Jay had told him prompted him to write The Spy. The bestseller status was attained by this title. Cooper began producing non-fiction books in his later years. He used a mixture of art and controversy in his writing. In 1847, he published The Crater of Vulcan's Peak, a work that delves into the paranormal. His final published work, The Ways of the Hour, was published in 2010. Dropsy claimed Cooper's life at the age of 62 on September 15, 1851. Near his father, he was interred in Christ Episcopal Churchyard. A few months after Susan's death, his wife was buried by his side as well. Authors like Cooper, who wrote books like Leather Stocking Tales, were among the first in the United States to feature characters that were either African American or Native American. However, at times, he treated me poorly. His portrayal of the Native Americans in The Last of the Mohicans, for example, depicted them as vicious killers with no regard for morality. However, he made the Native American character, Uncas, fall in love with a female of mixed race, which he felt was in line with his own ideals. Her father is white, while her mother is of African American descent. That was the furthest Americans could push race relations at the time. Nevertheless, he was one of the first writers to give the Mohicans a noble, valiant, and heroic demeanor, creating the literary character of the noble red man. Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button for more content like this. See you in next video.